And good afternoon, everyone. This is going to be a look inside video of this SH Data D220 radio. This is a rather interesting radio, and it's had a lot of discussion online lately. And I don't think I should go into a great lot, a whole lot of detail about this. There, the usual people have quite extensive videos up about this radio and what it does. What's interesting about it is the FM performance is pretty good. It's got two FM bands, so it's got the North American FM band, and then it's got the, the extended FM band that's used in some other parts of the world. It's got medium wave. Now, this is available in two versions. It's available in uh, 9 kilohertz steps, and it's available in 10. This is a 10 kilohertz step version, and the D219 that I have, the one that has more short wave bands, my version is the 9. Uh, kilohertz one, which means effectively that it's not great for use in North America where we have 10 kilohertz steps um, and vice versa, of course. Uh, you get some parts of the dial where the reception isn't just very good. I have a video that looks at that problem. Um, I haven't been able to get that radio, the D219 in the uh, 10 megahertz version. I did try to order one and they sent me the 9, so I sent it back. So uh, I th that might have been on Amazon, not on uh, XH Data. They really seemed to try to make a proper North American model. This one was available from the start, and this was actually bought through Amazon, but from uh, XH Data themselves as the seller. So, uh, and this is the right model. And it, uh, what I was really interested in was it's AM, it's medium wave performance. Uh, and it also has short wave band, which a number of reviewers have said is really quite usable. And I've only played with it a little bit. But uh, my experience is, yeah, it's absolutely usable short wave radio. It's difficult to tune because it's got it all on a single dial here. And what I'll say, the sound quality is pretty good. Um, the medium wave performance in terms of, like here in Toronto, I, I'm in Toronto, uh, where we have a fairly full dial with a number of strong and weak stations, it's really very good daytime um, medium wave radio. At night, if you use it with a coupling antenna, I've got a Texan uh, loop, which I use with it sometime, or I've tried with it a few times and it seems to work quite well. So I think it's pretty sensitive. Um, its limitation is, well, we'll see in a minute how big the ferrite bar antenna is in this radio. That will really be what our limiting factor is here. Um, what else to say? Uh, available in a few colors. I got orange because I've been buying, mostly bought black and gray radios, so this goes an orange one. Um, I will say as the orange one, the uh, pointer being sort of reddish on the orange background and not very visible. If this is easy to get at, I might paint that black or something. We'll see. It's, if it's put together like other XH data radios, it's actually not super easy to get at that. So in which case, I won't bother. But since this is a different, slightly different form factor than the others that I've opened up, maybe it'll be easy to get at. Uh, so just briefly, you have the band switch on the side power tuning, um, antenna doesn't rotate, but reasonable sized. Um, two double A's works fine on nickel metal hydrides. This would be an excellent emergency radio if you don't tend to use radios very much. This is a pretty good choice. And you've got the shortwave bands if you want them as well, which is most of those shortwave bands that you find useful in North America anyway. So I think this is a like this is a pretty compelling product. It's not very expensive. Although as with many things, I overpaid slightly to get it in, in, into Canada in a reasonable time. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at it. So the real question is, are the chips the same as in the D? 19, and I also have looked at in my other video, which I'll probably link below if I remember to, the D328. Uh, Both use the um, Silicon Labs uh, 4825A10 chip as the tuner chip, and I would expect that that's probably what's in here. But the real question is going to be what else is in it? Um, the uh, 
the interesting thing about the D219 is on the short wave, it has a, a preamplifier, essentially, which means that at least in some situations, and that's the case for me at home here, it has tendency to overload. This doesn't. I should say I have the little bit I played with it on shortwave is, uh, has been fairly decent. I mean, it's like it performed pretty well considering I was inside and it was daytime. Oh, okay, here we go. I was wondering whether I'd need the spudger. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Okay, so what do we see when we look in here? We've got a little ferrite antenna down at the bottom. It's all off by itself, which is a good thing. Now we can see that there's only a single coil on it, which is, you know, sort of characteristic of these digital radios. That comes up here. We've got two chips. And let's see if we can, oh, have they taken, I can't read either of those. Um, okay, well, let's just look at what we've got here. Maybe we'll, uh, let's see, remove these screws and see if we can get this board out. It looks like it's just two screws holding it in place. We have, uh, so this is the power coming in. I like this using board cutouts to um, keep the cables under control. That's actually on a plug, so it would be possible to unplug the power. That makes this very easy to get at. That's a nice design. Here's the speaker. That's soldered on, coming through. Um, and characteristic of a lot of the XH SATA stuff is that they sound a little better than you might expect. The speaker doesn't look like anything very special though here. Okay, so let's see. We we probably got to get the switch off. Looks like it's symmetrical, which makes it easy. What else have we got? Okay, so we got to lift. So what we've got is we've got the headphone jack here. So we'll get that out, and then we should be able to lift this up. And with a little care, okay. So we have the usual XH data thing. So it's not going to be easy to do. Oh, it came off. Okay. All right, so this is the way the dial works. These are very clever because they're so simple. We don't want to move this around very much. But this just, here, I'll, I'll show you. This little piece of plastic goes into a little slot here in the, this is not a capacitor, this is a uh, potentiometer because that's how these, uh, these digital radios work. Um, and then that slides this little pointer across here. Um, we won't be able to paint it probably because it's, you can see it's sort of wedged in there and I don't dare try to get it out any farther, I don't think. So that's just going to fit in here and curl around the top. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Those that's always a bit fiddly to get back in place afterward. So the real question, so there's really nothing on this side. We've got a capacitor. We've got a crystal. We've got a bunch of passive stuff. We have the antenna coming in. We do appear to have um, a series of transistors. Now, if I remember the, uh, um, the 219, you have some of these are operating as a switch. So let's see if I can find that. I'm just looking at my own video here. I mean, this board looks a lot like the 219 board to me. So this is a simplified input, right? It, are there only three transistors in here? I'm counting on the uh, D219. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six at least, right? So the uh, the 219 has a much more complex um, uh, 
essentially a RF amplifier. This does not. So that makes this closer in many ways to the uh, D328, which has a bunch of stuff associated with it being able to play SD cards. But apart from that, is simpler in terms of how the input works. So that would explain why this one doesn't overload, right? And it also, I suspect, means that it might work OK with an external antenna, again, compared to to that one. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see what I'm looking at here. So here we can see a bunch of passive components around, right? But nothing active apart from that chip, which I think is the amplifier. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's uh, I think is the amplifier. And this is probably an SI 4A25A, although I can't see any numbers on it at all. But I'm going to have a look. We, uh, sorry, I had a, if you heard some noise in the background, I had a couple of text messages come in. But uh, this is probably, I mean, almost certainly an SI chip or a clone. There's the crystal for it. And, you know, unlike the uh, 219, we only see one, two, three transistors and whatnot. So this is a much simpler input. This chip over here uh, is almost certainly the power amplifier chip. And as you can see, the speaker comes off of it through a couple of resistors and stuff. So uh, the only thing left to do is to try to read this. And I'm going to pause momentarily and get out a magnifying glass and try uh, a few different angles. Well, that was a very short pause because they're entirely blank. So they, I, I don't know whether that means that they're trying to hide what they're using or maybe they're copies. But that seems, I, I don't know if that's likely or whatnot. But anyway, they've scrubbed the, uh, the labeling on it. But I think we can assume that this is more or less the D219 board, but um, a simplified as appropriate as appropriate in a pocket radio like this. So um, now there's a little bit of information here on the side of the board. We get D220 version 1.1, 224, 0510. So, so made in May, um, or the board was manufactured or designed then. So really not too much to add to that. Uh, I'm going to try to get this back together and I'll come back perhaps to announce success. So I did end up taking this out and I think I am going to paint that with some paint pen before I try to put it back together just to see what happens. So let's just observe how this is going to go back together. So this is going to go back into here like that. And that's going to slide in like that. So the part we want to paint is right here. I zoomed in a little too much. And I've only got silver, so that's what we're going to use. Hopefully this won't rub out inside the little thing too much. All right, so we'll give that some time to dry and then try to reassemble this thing. And hopefully that's dried. So you can see how that goes along there. I'm sure they have a jig to hold this. All right. Okay. So we got that in place there. Let's make sure you can see how the silver is much easier to uh, to see against the dial back there. 
to zoom out a little bit more because I feel like I'm coming off screen. So the two things you really don't want to mess up too much when opening things like this. are things like dial cords, or in this case, this little dial uh, slider. And uh, and you don't want to pull these off if you can avoid it, right? Those are the relatively easy on a radio like this to reset solder them, but it's always a bit of a pain. Okay, so I think the way to do this is going to be to put this... Okay. Have we got it? Yeah, we got... See, we, so what I'm missing is that it's got to stay inside this little thing in here. Okay, there we go. I've got it. So I don't know if you see that, and I won't take it apart <laughs> for you to see it again, but there's a little slot it's got to sit in. But there we go. Okay, done. All right, so now we just need to put, whoops, you can put the band switch back on and these two screws in here hope I managing to keep some of this in frame no particular point to over tighten this stuff okay so we have that, and uh, fortunately they marked plus there, so I don't have to, I mean it will only go on one way, but, and then we can use this to keep the battery cables up, out of the way of the speaker. I do like the way XH Data designs these little things. They're really simple. And then put these four screws back in. and one more screw and this is back together. I will say, well, I dropped this head screwdriver on the floor, XH Data, it always seems to include a stand, which on this radio isn't very useful, but I appreciate it. It's my biggest complaint about the Texan PL330, which is otherwise one of my most favorite radios is that it doesn't have a stand. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So, what have we done? We've had a look inside. We found out that chip-wise, they've scrubbed the names from them, but it probably is using the SI uh, 4825A10 as Texans' other radio, I mean Texans, XH Data's other radios seem to, and, uh, and some sort of power amplifier chip, very likely the D2822M that's in the uh, D19, 219, I mean, D219. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just unfortunate that we can't verify that. So let's make see if it works. Let's put it on medium wave. 
La APRO, Centro de Descenso, por el expresidente Mauricio Otón, tocó un cuajón. Let's try out Jesus. I know, but like ever. And you can see how it just deals with. with that's French CBC here in Toronto, which is 860, 850, something like that. So the dial's not terribly used. Anyway, so as you can see, it works fine. We've repaired it without any, or put it back together without any problem. This uh, dial is much easier to uh, to read now that I used a little paint pen on it. I think black would have been nicer, but silver is what I've got, and it kind of goes with it. Uh, um, it would be nice if they used a black um, slider for this this color of the of of the radio it would improve it, but that's a pretty good fix. Again, that's very fiddly to get at, so I really wouldn't recommend trying to do it. But um, I'm pleased with that, and that makes taking it apart worthwhile, apart from being able to talk about that this radio with you guys. Um, but yeah, nice little radio. Um, I think we've had a pretty good run of inexpensive radios from uh, XH Zeta. I think this has you, it might work with an external antenna. I know some people have tried it out and have had some success. I think that would be worthwhile. But really, I think you would buy this as an FM and medium wave radio. Oh, one thing I should add about FM, it's it sounds great through this radio itself. It's a little disappointing through the earphone. I mean, it's not stereo, I wouldn't expect that. I mean, certainly fine for, uh, for um, certainly fine for any likely use case, but um, it's not a hi-fi device and certainly doesn't sound super when you uh, put it through, you know, good in-ear monitors or headphones or whatnot. So, you know, there are perhaps other options. Probably you want something that has stereo anyway if you're doing that, so that's fine. This is, that's not what this is for. Well, anyhow, thanks for watching. Hope that was interesting. Have a good afternoon.